Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mally Rosado, and I am the council president um, for the Court of Common Council for the City of Hartford. And I am calling to order the regular council meeting of August 10th. Mr. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilman Clark. Here. Councilman Gale. Here. Councilman LeBlanc. Here. Councilman Mitchum. Councilwoman Rosado. Present. Councilwoman Rossetti. Here. Councilman Sanchez. Present. Councilwoman Surgeon. Councilwoman Bermudez. Councilman Mitchum. Councilman Surgeon. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. And now would you please lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make the motion that we suspend the rules to add on item 34, which is a resolution uh, to authorize the mayor to accept, to apply for and accept a grant for 80000 from CFEF and to enter into a contract with CAHS for the purpose of participation in the CFEF Financial Navigator Program. Second. A motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Any discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bermudez. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Councilman Surgeon. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, through you, I'd like to make the motion that we place the following items on, on the consent calendar. Item number one with a replacement. Mayor Bronin with a company resolution authorizing the city to accept funds from the Connecticut Health Foundation to provide health education and other support services related to COVID-19. Item number four, Mayor Bronin with a company resolution authorizing the city to accept $3 million from the Dalio Education and the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving as a part of the city's initiative to roll out free citywide internet. Item number 10, Mayor Bronin with a company resolution transferring $132,514 from sundry non-operating department expenditures in fiscal year 2021 to the Registrar of Voters Office, or ROV. These funds will be used for the expenses associated with the presidential and local primary elections being held this month, actually for tomorrow. Item number 11, Mayor Bronin with accompanying resolution authorizing the city to apply for and accept Ryan White Part A grant funds to provide core medical and support services to people living with HIV AIDS in the area covering Hartford, Middlesex, and Tallinn counties. Item number 17, a report from the, with a resolution from the Quality of Life and Public Safety Committee confirming the appointment of Ronald D. Holmes to the Civilian Police Review Board. Item number 18, a uh, report from the Quality of Life and Public Safety Committee with a company resolution by the Hartford Court of Common Council calling upon the Hartford delegation to to the Connecticut General Assembly to sponsor a bill requiring that OSTA conduct a public safety study to ensure that Hartford is 
taking advantage of every opportunity to protect our streets from reckless drivers. Item number 20, a substitute resolution confirming the nomination of Michael T. Looney as Director of Department of Public Works for the City of Hartford, effective upon council vote. And also to item number, item number 34, which is a resolution to authorize the mayor to apply for and accept a grant for 80,000 from CFEF and to enter into a contract with CAHS for the purpose of participating in the CFEF Financial Navigator Program. I second the motion. The motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Councilman Nick LeBron? Yes, um, on item number four, um, is it safe to assume that the reason why uh, we're putting this on consent, uh, obviously I am um, the proponent of, you know, I think it's called ubiquitous access to internet services, but it's, uh, the question that I have um, for everyone is that we're putting this on consent so that way it can be rolled out for this school year. That is correct. But so, so is the desire that uh, we'll have some, I know that the, um, that the intent is for the Northeast region and the Frog Hollow regions to be up and running first. So the desire is for these regions to be up and running for September. That is correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. Um, yes, with the exception of item 18, I will uh, abstain from that vote. I'm sorry, which item? Item number 18. Okay. Councilman Gale? Yes. Councilman LeBron? Yes. Councilwoman Rosado? Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti? Yes. Councilman Sanchez? Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make the motion that we receive the following items. Item number 12, Health and Human Services Committee communication concerning an update on COVID-19 school report and new grant application. Item number 13, Quality of Life and Public Safety Committee communication discharging the resolution requesting that Emerge CT provide a presentation to the next City Council's Committee of the Whole Cal meeting, whereby the date and time of such meeting shall be determined by the Hartford City Council President in accordance with Council rules and requesting that the resolution be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Second the motion. Motion has been made and properly seconded. Are there any questions? Any discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. All right, thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we refer the following items. Item number two, uh, to the Quality Life and Public Safety Committee, which is an accompanying resolution confirming the appointment of Eric W. Crawford, uh, to the Civilian Police Review Board. Item number three, uh, to the Public Works, Parks, Recreation, and Environment Committee, uh, which is Mayor Bronin with the company resolution confirming the appointment of Franklin Perry II as a regular member of the Golf Oversight Commission. Item number five, uh, to the Operations Management Budget and Government Accountability Committee and to the Planning and Planning and Planning and Zoning uh, Commission with a hearing date of Monday, August 17th, 2020, which is Mayor Bronin with a company resolution, uh, which would authorize the transfer of seven city-owned properties 
uh, to the Hartford Land Bank, item number six, also to the Operations Management Budget and Government Accountability Committee, uh, which is Mayor Brolin with the company resolution authorizing the city to enter into a tax fixing agreement with Mitchell Farmington Valley LLC, owner of Land Rover dealership at 77 West Weston Street, item number seven to the Planning, Economic Development and Housing Committee and to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, which is Mayor Bronin with a company resolution, which would authorize the acquisition of property located at 522 and 53T and uh, Cello Street, the properties from the, which are the properties from the House of Bread, uh, which has an hearing date also of Monday, August 17th, 2020. Item number nine, to the Quality Life and Public Safety Committee, which is Mayor Bronin with a company resolution confirming the appointments of Frank Barrows, Lionel Thompson Jr., Diego Lopez, Reverend Elizabeth Arpalumpum, LaShawn Robinson, Charlie Ortiz, and Kyla Jackson to the Police Accountability Review Board, PARB. Item number 21 to the Committee of the Whole, which is an ordinance amending Chapter 2 appointments of Department Heads Requirements, Section 850 Residency Requirements of the Municipal Code. Item number 25 uh, to the Operations Management Budget and Government Accountability Committee, which also has a hearing date of Monday, August 17th, 2020, which is Mayor Bronin with ordinance making general fund appropriations to reflect project costs relative to public improvements in the Martin Luther King School. Item number 30 to the Labor, Education, Workforce, and Youth Committee which is a resolution uh, requesting that the City Council, City of Hartford, assembled uh, on the 10th day of August, urge Alden Global to cease any further layoffs or, bur or buyouts that have decimated the staff, not to seek to increase ownership interests in Tribune Publishing, and to consider in good faith any offers from outside entities that would return Tribune Publishing newspapers to civic-minded ownership. I second the motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Any discussions? Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make the motion that we postpone the following items until our next council meeting, which is September 14th, 2020. Item number 14, from the Quality Life and Public Safety Committee communication to postpone action on resolution requesting that a quarter common council creates a process whereby the mayor must choose a majority of the members of the Civilian Police Review Board from among candidates nominated by community organizations specifically focused on serving communities impacted by over-policing with a list of such organizations to be determined and com comprise at least two members who are under the age of 26 when they are appointed and at least one member whom has previously been incarcerated after a criminal conviction or an adjudication of juvenile delinquency. Item number 19, with a substitute resolution from the Public Works, Parks, Recreation, and Environment Committee with accompanying substitute resolution that will authorize the city to enter into an agreement with Bushnell Park Foundation to help achieve our mutual goal of restoring, preserving, and promoting park. Item number 22, to ordinance amending chapter five, division five, section two dash one nine six of the Hartford Municipal Code. Item number 23, ordinance amending chapters two, article, article 18, section two dash eight six zero, motor vehicle policy of the Hartford Municipal Code. Item number 24, resolution calling upon uh, the mayor to suspend Police Chief Jason Thody from all job duties and relieve him of his city-owned issued weapon and the city-issued vehicle until such time as an independent audit commission completes his investigation. Item number 
29, which is a resolution requesting that those now living on these ancestral lands recognize the harm was done in the pursuit of shared responsibility and of promoting knowledge about indigenous peoples, unifying communities, combating prejudice, and eliminating discrimination against indigenous peoples, and that on the second Monday in October of each year, the city of Hartford will support events that encourage understanding and appreciation of indigenous peoples. Changes shall not affect the status of the second Monday of October of each year as a publicly recognized holiday. Item 13, sorry, item uh, 32, uh, as a replacement with, uh, also has a hearing date on Monday, August 17th, 2020, uh, which is a resolution by the Court of Common Council requesting to remove, remove the name of Columbus Boulevard and rename it Dr. Frank T. Simpson Boulevard, named after one of Hartford's historic civil rights champions. I second the motion. A motion has been made and properly seconded. Are there any discussion? Any discussions? Councilman Clark? Yes, Madam President, thank you through you. Uh, just for the record, uh, I uh, wholeheartedly uh, would support uh, that my colleagues um, would not move to postpone item 32. Rather, uh, since there is a process already in place that that would be referred to uh, the public dedication committee for that committee to take it up. Any other discussions? Any other discussions? Um, Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. Uh, yes, uh, for the exception of item 32. Councilman Gale. Yes to all. Councilman LeBron. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make the motion that we withdraw item number eight, which is a uh, Mayor Bronin with a company resolution requesting that the council enter into its executive session during the council meeting on Monday, July 13th, which is a workers' compensation matter, Otto Dow versus City of Park. Second the motion. Thank you. Is there, are there any discussions? Any discussions? Mr. Clerk, if you could just please note that this item has been withdrawn. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make the motion that we place uh, action, place up for action item 15, uh, which is a report from the Operations Management Budget and Government Accountability with a, an accompanying resolution authorizing the city of Hartford to enter into a 15 year tax abatement agreement with Rustbrook 3 Housing LLC for rental housing units to be developed at 124 Mark Twain Drive, officially known as 1550 Albany Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut, 06112. Second. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Councilman Clark. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, uh, I would just urge my colleagues to support this resolution. Uh, as we know, this is an ongoing development uh, in the uh, Blue Hills uh, neighborhood community, also to abutting the Upper Auburn uh, community as well. And uh, the houses uh, right now are uh, looking very immaculate. And in order for the rest of the things um, to support, uh, the, uh, not just the Hartford Housing Authority, but also to uh, the developers need the city council to uh, move this forward so people can uh, start to move in. Thank you, Councilman Clark. Councilman Gale. I, I would like to second uh, Councilman Clark's uh, comments and add uh, that uh, this uh, tax abatement that comes to us uh, includes a couple of things that we've been very keen on making sure uh, were added to all such tax fixing agreements that come to council. And uh, that is a community benefits agreement 
as well as some form of a clawback agreement. Uh, and with respect to uh, Westbrook Village, uh, we have, I don't know if I want to call it the standard, but it's, it's rather, in my time on council anyway, it's rather been the standard uh, for community benefits, which is that 15% uh, of the total construction project cost uh, shall go to minority and women owned businesses. 15% of the total project work hours uh, shall be worked by minority or women trade workers and no less than 30% of total project hours shall go to Hartford residents. Um, so with that community benefits agreement together with uh, what I'll call part two, which is a clawback, meaning that should there be uh, defaults, uh, the city would have the ability to recoup some of the tax uh, abatement. Uh, I wholeheartedly support this uh, this moving forward. Thank you. Councilman LeBron. Yes, I just want to echo the sentiments of my council colleagues. You know, as a former resident at, of Westbrook, I know it's going to be named something else, but forever in my heart, it'll be Westbrook. Um, you know, I'm extremely pleased. I got to visit the uh, the new development. Uh, you have, uh, you saw one in three bedrooms. Um, there's also handicap access. There's also uh, namings of streets after local um, Hartford um, uh, folks, including Mayor Kerry Saxon Perry, which I was very impressed with. They, uh, you know, they built it uh, such a, in, in a great way, and um, and the way that it's constructed, my understanding is um, it's, it's akin to or um, synonymous with urban development, where you having you know folks being able to see each other when they open their door, and also uh, you know the the entrances nearer to the streets. So I am. Um, I'm definitely in favor of this, uh, and I'm very happy to see um, the residents being able to um, to thrive in this area. Thank you, Councilman LeBron. Councilman Sanchez. I also want to echo uh, the sentiment of my colleagues here. Um, I also visited and had a tour of the uh, of the housing or um, apartments there. And uh, it has been uh, long overdue. Um, the, the, this housing itself is uh, is state of the art. It is finally replacing it, dilapidated what we uh, called housing, but I actually called project afterwards. And uh, uh, and let me tell you, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, construction that's uh, occurred there, and uh, very beneficial to the community. Uh, I I, um, I look forward to seeing this project uh, its completion and um, definitely support this resolution. Thank you. Are there any other discussions? Any other discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. Wholeheartedly, yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Rosado. Mr. Clerk, I am recusing myself from this resolution. Okay. Since I work for the Hartford Housing Group. Okay. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Absolutely, yes. Motion pass. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make the motion that we place for action item 16, which is the operations management budget and government accountability report with accompanying resolution authorizing the city of Hartford to enter into a 10 year tax abatement agreement with TMG Cara Holdings LLC, which is the owner of the property to support the 150 units of affordable rental housing known as Clay Arsenal. I second the motion. motion made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Councilman LeBron? Yes, uh, both both of these, the development previously and the one now are very uh, connected to, uh, to me personally. My wife grew up uh, right across the street from this development. And I have to say that um, what we know historically to have happened here at the city of Hartford at these developments has really been uh, a, a tragedy um, in terms of what they, uh, the previous owners did to our community and really left a scar in our community. So I'm happy that um, we're moving this forward so that we can begin the healing process by having someone come in who's committed and dedicated and does this type of work um, for the people in this community. 
Um, so the other thing that I want to publicly state to everyone um, in this forum is that there was a community uh, uh, conversations or, or or negative thoughts that possibly the new ownership was connected to the previous ownership. After hearing from committee meetings and reading everything about this property, I can wholeheartedly tell my community and tell everyone in Hartford that is not the case. And so um, I'm happy that we're moving forward uh, with this property and happy um, uh, about what it represents um, for that, uh, for the Sim Street and that area and community. Thank you, Councilman LeBron. Councilman Gale? Uh, yeah, uh, consistent with my remarks on the last matter, I uh, would just like to uh, restate that uh, this proposal, like the last proposal, does include a community benefits agreement. Uh, it is the same 15-30-15 uh, uh, formula, uh, if you will. So I, I wholeheartedly applaud that and support it. And it also has uh, a clawback provision. Uh, in this case, because it's private ownership, the clawback provision provides that should the uh, owner uh, sell uh, or refinance at any time during the abatement uh, period, uh, the city of Hartford will get 10% of the sales proceeds or, or the amount of refinance over uh, the, this equity recapture uh, in repayment of the abated taxes. So uh, those are, to me, those are very good things that we make sure that we add to all of these tax fixing types of agreements. Uh, so I wholeheartedly support it. Thank you, Councilman Yo, Councilman Clark. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, as uh, my my two esteemed colleagues have mentioned, uh, bottom line, this is good for the uh, the personal uh, neighborhood. Long time in the making, uh, and what an uplifting uh, this uh, project will be. Uh, uh, not just to those that will um, call this uh, this uh, development their residence, but also to to the neighborhood as well. Thank you, Councilman Clark. Any other discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Motion pass. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make a motion that we place some action uh, item 26, uh, which, is, which is a resolution establishing the civic engagement and cultural affairs initiative process, which by would directly benefit the residents of the city of Hartford. Second the motion. A motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Any discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Rosado. Yes. Councilman Rosetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Motion pass. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I would like to make the motion that we place on action uh, item 28, which is a resolution requesting that any proposed ordinance sub submitted to the town clerk's office by a member of the Court of Common Council or by the mayor include a brief two to three sentence statement on what the ordinance seeks to do and to have a fre frequently asked questions document attached to it following a public hearing use you uh, based on, sorry, uh, the questions asked. Second. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Any discussions? Councilman Gale? Thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, I, I'm not opposed to the sentiment that's expressed in this, um, uh, in this resolution. Um, uh, you know, we certainly have been counsel, I think, uh, that have been uh, very transparent and have been supportive of transparent, uh, transparency and accessibility and, uh, at, at all times and accountability at all times. Uh, but I don't think that this is appropriately worded. I 
I'm concerned that this is the type of resolution that could be misused um, uh, and create misimpressions at times. And so um, I will oppose it at this time. Councilman LeBron? Yeah, I, you know, I definitely understand the spirit of what is trying to be made here. But what I want to say is this, is that oftentimes when we um, in uh, positions, advisory positions, elected positions, or any, any kind of uh, positions, we have to be very mindful and very careful of how we're communicating to our people. And so oftentimes when you see something like this, what this um, can be, uh, what people had mentioned to me, that this can be very condescending for some people to think that um, folks can't read the agenda or don't understand the agenda. And, uh, you know, or folks need help or guidance and understanding of that. You know, um, sometimes that could be viewed uh, negatively. And, you know, in Hartford, we have a, a, a very active political base. The folks that are engaged in our city council meeting are well versed and well knowledgeable about the processes. And if there, um, you know, if folks do, and I, I urge the community members, if there's ever a resolution that, um, or anything that comes up on the agenda that you need further communications on outside of the public hearing, that's what we're here for. We're here for our emails. You can email us, you can call us. I'm sure all of my council colleagues would be happy and welcome to um, have conversations with any constituents regarding any kind of concerns. So, um, you know, and that way it can be individualized to that person's, um, to that person's unique questions. So, um, so that's just uh, my statement on, on, the, um, on 28. Any other discussions? Are there any discussions? Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilman Clark. Um, no. Councilman Gale. No. Councilman LeBron. No. Councilman Rosado. No. Councilman Rosetti. No. Councilman Sanchez. No. Motion failed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to make the motion that we place for action item number 27, which is a resolution requesting the finance department for the city of Hartford to provide city council with a monthly report on all expenditures made by the Court of Common Council, excluding council stipends and payroll of council aides. I second the motion. A motion has been made and properly second. Councilman Gale. Uh, again, uh, Madam President, uh, I, uh, I certainly applaud the sentiment that's expressed in the resolution. Uh, I I think that uh, you know the more transparency the better. But uh, again, I'm not sure that this is well honed at this point. Um, I I, uh, I I'm concerned about. Uh, well, I I'm concerned that this should be fine tuned. So um, at this point, I guess rather than uh, moving to send it to a committee, I'll I'll just say that I I would oppose it in its current form. Thank you, Councilman Gale. Councilman LeBron. Yes, I uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, so, and I want to um, ask a question of my uh, uh, senior colleagues, and I say senior and experience. Um, no, so you don't uh, mean I, me, right? You don't no, mean no, me, no, Councilman? No, no. Okay, good. My, my uh, experienced uh, uh, council colleagues, in that um, it's my understanding at any point with uh, council folks can get this information at any point, number one. And number two is that, you know, that these are provided to us in quarterly reports. Am I correct in that understanding? That is correct, Councilman LeBron. So therefore, this resolution is really a moot point because we have this, we, are, we have access to this information at any given time. That okay, is correct. You. Any other discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. No. Councilman Gale. No. Councilman LeBron. No. Councilwoman Rosado. No. Councilwoman Rosetti. No. Councilman Sanchez. No. Motion fails. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I would like to make the motion that we place up for action item 31, uh, which is a resolution requesting that an ad hoc task force of stakeholders be created to outreach and develop an inventory of all related artifacts that memorialize Christopher Columbus that are now deemed and considered unfit on completion of the inventory will recommend a process to the mayor and the Court of Common Council. I second the motion. Motion has been made and probably second. Are there any discussions? Councilman LeBron. Yes, um, I want to thank, first of all, uh, uh, my council partner, my co uh, the sponsor and I co-sponsored uh, Councilwoman Rossetti. I think it's important to understand that um, regarding Columbus, that the narrative that has been provided to us historically was a narrative that was constructed in a way that represented a, a, a certain viewpoint in a certain history. Now, at these points in times, we understand uh, the negative uh, tragedies that Columbus bestowed on, um, on everyone he touched, and uh, including the complete genocide of the Taino population in Puerto Rico and really massacres that happened in the Caribbean. And as a result of that, um, we need to change history. What I also want to recognize is that um, for my Italian American constituents is that my understanding and conversation with folks is that we are all in agreement and that the name around Columbus should be changed. But I want to further go a little bit deeper in that when the Italian American uh, immigrants or, or emigrated here to the United States, there were there was a need to attach themselves to something, and the 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 status quo and the standard um, of, was to connect themselves to Columbus because America had celebrated Columbus up until that point. So the narrative was to connect themselves to an Italian American, and why not Columbus? What I, what I want to reiterate is the fact that this is not a negation of what the Italian American community means to us and what they have done to influence our community. What I do want to, uh, uh, to really glorify is the opportunity to galvanize as a community in one city across Italian Americans, Latinos, and African American community to really come together and unpack the the, the, the narratives around Columbus and really start to counter the narratives around Columbus. Um, I like to coin this or uh, Councilwoman Rossetti, uh, everything Columbus, not just one section. There's everything Columbus from the educational narratives that our children still continue to have every day, all the way to statues and monuments and streets. And so um, I think we have an opportunity here. And so um, I, I would love the support of all my council colleagues. Thank you, Councilman LeBron. Are there any other discussion? Councilman Clark? Madam President, uh, as we all know, I introduced the resolution um, along with um, uh, Councilwoman Surgeon and others on the renaming of Columbus Boulevard to Dr. Frank T. Simpson, a noted civil rights uh, leader and icon, not just in the city of Hartford, but also to uh, in the state of Connecticut, and also had a school named uh, after him in conjunction with uh, uh, <clears throat> Waverly. Uh, and it's the, uh, the school has been closed. And so, uh, although I will support this resolution and uh, my colleagues uh, did vote to postpone uh, the renaming of the resolution, uh, I would hope that uh, at our subsequent meeting after this, which is on September 14th, uh, that uh, my colleagues will uh, support the resolution uh, to be, to be uh, which is item number 32, to be referred to the public dedication committee. Thank you, Councilman Clark. Councilman Sanchez. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> so, I appreciate uh, Councilman uh, LeBron uh, in your uh, in your words. I uh, I definitely support this resolution to create this task force. I think it's very meaningful that we have a task force because 
uh, it, it is my thoughts and my feelings that um, obviously these streets and also the statues was erected uh, to celebrate and honor the contribution of the Italian American community. So with that said, I uh, stand that although the Columbus um, character or person was probably the, the wrong figure to identify the Italian American community, I still stand that these streets and the statues that, that was erected, we could still fulfill and honor the Italian American community by using this task force to identify the proper people or heroes from that uh, community that we could celebrate and replace those street names as well as the statue with the input from that community as well as our, our neighboring community. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I will say this, that although it was named Columbus, it wasn't actually celebrating Columbus, it's actually celebrating the contribution and honoring the Italian American community. Thank you for uh, putting in that resolution, both to you and uh, Councilwoman Rossetti. Are there any other discussions? Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make the motion that we place up for action item number 33, which is a resolution requesting that the mayor, with a replacement, uh, however, as well, uh, resolution requesting that the mayor issue a joint letter with the Court of Common Council to request the governor issue an executive order mandating public health protocols, uh, which also will include COVID-19 testing, be implemented to ensure the health and safety of students, teachers, and other staff who enter and work in school buildings and to make available all necessary resources needed for each school district will require to ensure a safe school environment. I second the motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Councilman Gale. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I certainly support the sentiment expressed uh, in the resolution, but the concern I have is that the tenor of the resolution um, almost implies that the uh, that the governor may not be doing everything that could be done uh, to assist our schools at this point in time. And I don't think I'm, I don't know that any of us are really prepared to say that. I think um, it also may imply that our school board is not necessarily doing everything that it could be doing. And from what I, from what I have heard, from what I have read, uh, from uh, uh, my my connections with the Hartford uh, uh, with the Hartford school system, which are many uh, at many different levels, um, I, I think that uh, our superintendent has put forward a pretty comprehensive uh, plan at this point. So, I, what I would like to do is I would like to move to postpone this matter at this time. Uh, to give us an opportunity to see if, if indeed there's really some sort of a need, because right now I'm not sensing that there's a need. So I, I would move to postpone this matter. Councilman Clark. Madam President, through you, um, the governor has placed uh, the decisions in the hands of the superintendents and also the school districts, uh, as we have seen, to put plans in place. However, um, <clears throat> testing needs to be ramped up, and as we prepare for school to be reopened, only 17% of our Hartford population has been tested for COVID-19, and there is no protocols in place such as a mandating uh, that students and teachers and all those who work inside the school buildings uh, be uh, tested uh, for COVID-19, not to mention uh, the districts do still need resources uh, to make sure that uh, the buildings are uh, as, as COVID free as possible and socially distanced so that whatever 
uh, the decision will be for Hartford Public Schools to uh, which will be starting school on September 8th uh, that the classrooms, the buildings are ready. Not to mention too, the school buses have to be uh, prepared uh, for uh, for the COVID environment and also to to be socially distanced. So um, I've already spoken to uh, the mayor uh, prior to uh, uh, writing this resolution, and does agree that there's, there needs to be additional testing, and um, and so I would urge my colleagues uh, to support this. And this is just simply a, a, a letter. A uh, joint letter going to uh, from the council and the mayor going to the governor's office uh, to do such as which is which has been outlined um, in this uh, in this resolution. And by the way, our next meeting won't be until after the start of Hartford Public Schools. I just want to make that clear. Thank you, Councilman Clark. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Um, since March 13th, when everything was shut down from the coronavirus. I think what we've seen is, um, and what I've seen as the chair of Health and Human Services, is, is how politicized responses are to the coronavirus. And I think, to Councilman Clark's point, is that we have to navigate through the fog of the politicization of this virus. And what I mean by that is that so many departments from the CDC to Dr. Fauci, to our Health and Human Services, to State Department of Education, and to our superintendent. We have all of these um, it, um, uh, information streams and people um, using uh, them as political venues. You know, um, the example that I always give in terms of the coronavirus is that I remember back in March, it was like we weren't supposed to uh, wear masks. And now, God forbid, you go out in public and you if somebody's not wearing a mask, or as my wife would say, somebody's showing their teeth is a problem. And so, you know, that's just that's just a microcosm of what's going on. And then to support our superintendent, who is a superintendent really of an educational delivery system. She has been put in place to deliver education. No one profoundly could have known about the coronavirus, and yet we are asking our superintendent to take this on. And so I think we have an opportunity. Um, I agree with testing, uh, you know, our community specific. I think uh, Councilman uh, Majority Leader Clark said 17 percent. That is a very low rate. And although people are supposedly tired of the coronavirus, it's not its not going away. And so we have these opportunities to partner with our school, to strengthen the school, and to um, you know increase testing, uh, because te we are, we're only gonna be able to test our way out of it. So thank you, Councilman Clark, for putting forth this resolution. Councilman uh, Sanchez. I, um, <clears throat> I'd like to echo the sentiment from my colleagues. Thank you for that. Um, and, and also, I, I you know, I, I trust that our uh, superintendent, Leslie Torres, uh, is doing a great job. And to your point, her job is for education. Uh, what we're talking about here is health issues. Uh, we're talking about a virus. Uh, we're talking about that the school system or the school is going to start soon at the same time when the flu season starts. Uh, this is important to recognize. Uh, we've been fortunate that we haven't had any mosquito issues with the EEE from last year because of a drought that we're going through. So I think what is important is that we support this resolution so that we can get some kind of guidance and, and, and from the state level so that this guidance and protocol can also help and support our uh, superintendent when it comes to opening the schools. Uh, as you know, you know, it, it, in, in every year that I recognize um, when school it uh, starts in September, uh, you know, and the flu season starts. Well, you know, children are not aware of, you know, and, you know, of the, and, or have the discipline to recognize that there's a situation going on around them. Uh, they, you can teach them as much as you want about sanitation or sanitizing their hands, washing their hands, wearing the mask, which, you know, probably be difficult for them too as well. But, you know, eventually, they're going to catch a virus if someone has it in school. This is an enclosure. It's not open to the to the air, it being in a park or what have you, in the gym, gymnasium, where you know you can have 50% of the population in there or half half that population. So you know, I uh, I I ask that the rest of the council 
um, support this resolution and we can send a message and have the state or our governor come and give us some guidance and help support our superintendent to guide her as well and how are we going to uh, address the issue of testing and wearing the mask or or any other ideas that may come forth so thank you for that thank you uh councilman sanchez uh there is still a motion uh on the floor from councilman gale to postpone it councilman gale uh, I'll withdraw. Having heard all the comments, uh, I'll certainly withdraw the uh, uh, withdraw the motion to uh, postpone. I I appreciate the comments that everybody's made. I certainly uh, would uh, second all of them. Uh, I there's absolutely nothing here that I'm opposed to. Uh, I my my thought was the wording of the motion itself might not be actually uh, conveying. Uh, the sentiment, but having heard the sentiment, I think the sentiment will carry the day here, uh, and it's the sentiment that's important. Uh, we clearly want to get behind uh, our school system, our kids, uh, our parents, our teachers. Uh, uh, and do it. I withdraw the motion to postpone. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Gale. Are there any other further discussions? So we have a motion that has been placed and properly second. Mr. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilman Clark. Wholeheartedly, yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Rosado. <clears throat> Excuse yes. me. Councilwoman Rosetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Motion pass. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clerk. I just want to take a uh, a brief moment um, to share our deep condolences to uh, Councilman Mixtum, who could not join us today um, because of the passing of, of his uh, mother. So I urge everyone to please keep Councilman Mixtum in your prayers. Are there any additional comments from Council? Thank you, everyone, and thank you to our public who has. Uh, then with us, Councilman Clark. Uh, Madam President, uh, just through you, I would like to rem uh, remind everyone who is listening uh, that tomorrow is our primary day. And so for those who have not um, mailed in their absentee ballots, please uh, wear your mask, sanitize your hands, uh, cover up, and go exercise your right to vote. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you, uh, Councilman Gale. Somebody correct me. I, I heard that um, the governor actually may have extended the date, and maybe our town clerk knows this, the date for postmarking your absentee ballot. Um, Mr. Town Clerk, am I correct on that? Yeah, we have um, heard that there is a, an executive order that would allow ballots at a postmark by tomorrow night midnight to be accepted up until the 13th of uh, which is would be Thursday um, we're waiting for it in writing but it's going through the 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 grapevines of the town clerks association that that is in the process of being signed if it hasn't been signed yet thank you so I guess the message is uh, don't despair if you haven't gotten your absentee ballot in the mail yet uh, you still got time get it in the mail tomorrow and uh, hopefully it'll be counted. Wonderful, and thank you uh, for the update, uh, Mr. Clerk. With no further business to conduct, this meeting is adjourned. Good night, and thank you, everyone. <laughs>